Hey folks and welcome back. So in this scene we're going to take a look at setting up a projection shader. Now in the previous scene I had lined up my camera, my projection cam, and I had set up a basic shader for that. Here's my projection cam up here. And once I had it set up I made sure to lock all of the attributes. I don't want that camera to move. Okay, so uh, it is pretty important to lock it off. It takes a little while to line it up and you definitely don't want it to move afterward. So I'm fairly happy with where it's at. Now what I want to try and do is just recap the process that you need to go through to set up your projection shader. And that involves bringing in our RGB texture and our RGB alpha and projecting it onto our proxy geometry. Now whenever we're dealing with textures in Maya, you're going to end up using shaders. So one of the decisions that we have to make at the start is which shader type we want to use. Now there's lots of different types of shaders in Maya. Uh, and traditionally, when projecting matte paintings, you would use a surface shader, which is this guy up here. It's a black shader, and it is a completely black shader because it has no lighting information in it. Um, sometimes they're referred to as a constant shader, and it's a constant color if you put it onto a piece of geometry by default. We don't want extra lighting, generally speaking, when we're projecting matte paintings, and that's because our matte painting that we created over in Photoshop has all the lighting information in it. So that's the one that you would normally use. Now I've tried doing this setup using the surface shader and I found that it works absolutely fine to render but it doesn't look so great in the viewport. I'm gonna use an Arnold surface shader instead which looks pretty good in the viewport and looks pretty good when I render it as well. So uh, let's make a start. So I'm gonna select my geometry here and I'm going to apply an Arnold surface shader onto it uh, by right clicking and coming down to assign new material. I'm going to go to Arnold's and I'm going to come down and look for Arnold's standard surface shader, which is this guy just here. The Arnold's surface shader is lighter than the default Lambert shader, which is a little bit darker. You can just see it down here. So to get to the attributes for the Arnold surface shader, you just select it and it will be the last tab in your attribute editor. So it is this one over here, AI standard surface two. Now I'm going to rename it and it is very important in 3D to try and keep things organized and named and I would say the number one rabbit hole that new users fall into is poor scene organization which makes their life a lot harder so I've got this one named house shader just here and the first attribute I want to override is the color attribute and I want to override it with a texture so I'm going to click on the little checker just at the end here and the file node is the one that we're after now normally you would left mouse button click on this file node and add a texture and that would be if you had UVs but in, uh, but in this particular case we want to project so you need to right mouse button click and go create as projection. That will get you this extra node here the projection node and you are going to need that to be able to project your map painting. So on my projection node I need to change the projection type from planar which is the default to perspective. And I need to do that because if you come down to camera projection attributes, this is where we link to our projection camera, our lineup camera that we did previously. And you can see that it's grayed out currently. So when I change it from projection type planner over to perspective, Maya then allows me to pick a camera. It says, what camera do you want to project out of? So I'm gonna link it to my projection camera shape. Now one extra little thing that I can do here is I can come down to effects and I can change the filter down to zero. And the reason that I'm going to do that is sometimes you get black fringing around the outside of your image when you apply the alpha. So that should help take care of that. The next thing I need to do is go and pick my texture, my RGB texture. And I do that by clicking this little outgoing connection button here. So I'm on the file node. I'm gonna click the little folder here and if I project is set up correctly I'll open up inside my source images folder. Now these are all the textures for the finished scene so there's quite a few of them and I am looking for house or GB and you can start to see how naming becomes very important. Here is my house underscore RGB so that's the one I'm looking for for my initial projection. I'm going to click open there and my house texture is now being projected through the camera that I chose onto my proxy geometry and because I'd lined up my camera correctly in the previous step you can see that it matches 
fairly okay, at least from this angle. It matches fairly okay. So you can see that the RGB has been brought in, but the alpha has not. And that's why I'm getting this black line around the edge, because the alpha isn't cutting out the extra details currently. Now, I had matched the proxy geometry relatively well to my original model. So it's not looking too bad, but I need to get rid of these black lines. And the way I'm going to do that is by bringing in my alpha. So I'm going to go back onto my Arnold surface shader. I'm going to scroll down here to geometry, open that one up. And here's where I can bring in my alpha. Now this is sometimes referred to as an alpha cutout. And just to be clear, it is a little different from setting up a default shader in Arnold. If you wanted something to be glass, you would use transmission. But for an alpha cutout, we're going to use opacity here. And it is going to be a projection, so we need to set it up the same way. I'm going to click on the little black and white checker here. I need to right click on file, create as projection. I'm going to set it up to be a perspective projection that's going to allow me access to my camera here. I'm going to set it up for projection cam shape. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to set my filter to zero on my effects tab. And I'm going to jump over to the file here and I'm going to go and load in my alpha. So here's my house underscore alpha dot tiff. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to bring it in. And now it has cut out the edge just here. So I get a bit more fine detail and that's coming from my texture. So I don't need to add it into my proxy geometry. Now, one step that I had forgotten to do on my RGB texture was I also should turn the filter type here from quadratic to off. Now, this is on the file note when I'm bringing them in. It's not the big thick outline that we got around the outside here. It's a much more subtle thing. It's about a pixel wide, so it's not usually noticeable. But if we change the filter type from quadratic to off, it will help with that. Now, I should do that on my RGB texture as well. So I can do that by going back up to my original shader and probably the easiest way to do that is just select here and I could go back up to my base color and I could come through back to here and I could change it just like this. But I want to try and do it in a different way. I want to get more used to using the hypershade. So let's take a quick look at doing that. So the hypershade shows me all of the shaders within my scene. And it allows me to have a better overview of what's actually happening underneath the hood in Maya. So the way to look at each shader is to select the shader that you want, right click and go to graph network. And this will show me all of the nodes that make up this particular shading network. And node networks can look a little scary if you've not seen them before, but they are generally very easy to read after you get used to them. And they're quite good at showing more complicated setups. So in this particular case, here is the Arnold shader. And these are all of the attributes that we've been overriding on our Arnold shader. So you can see here's the color here, base color, and here's the opacity. And we overwrote those with some textures. Here is the RGB texture coming in here. Uh, so on our Arnold shading node, we said let's override color here. And we brought in this texture, but if you remember, we right clicked and said, bring it in as a projection. So it created this projection node here. The projection node is necessary because we want to pick what camera we want to project out of, and then it overwrites the color. So that's what's happening just through here. This other little setup just up here is the alpha coming in. If you remember, we went to the opacity and we overrode opacity, but we right clicked and we set up the projector node again, and then when the projector node was set up pointing to our camera, we loaded in our alpha just here. Okay, so in this particular case, if I want to go back to my file settings for my RGB, I can select this guy. I can come over here to my attribute editor and I can see that, yeah, it is still set to quadratic and I'll just change it over to off. Now that's a smaller little thing, but that's how I would go about doing it through the hypershade rather than the attribute editor. Now it's very handy to get used to the hypershade in this case because it's very easy to debug things in the hypershade when they start to go wrong. There's two different ways we can view our projected models within Maya. And the first one is that we can view it within the viewport here. And we don't tend to think of the viewport as a renderer, but it is a renderer. It's an OpenGL renderer. And 
To look at the render settings for our viewport, you can go to renderer here, viewport, and bring up the options. So I have the transparency algorithm set to alpha cutout, and alpha cutout works quite well with Arnold's. So that's the one that I'm recommending. You can try out the other ones, and you can see that we're not having such a successful time in cutting out the alpha within our viewport. Now these ones here, uh, like object sorting for example, and depth peeling will still work when I render, but they're not working correctly for me within my viewport. Unfortunately, graphics cards can be quite finicky, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if some of you get different results than what I do when playing around with some of these settings here. But this is where you can come to to try out the different algorithms uh, that we can use for transparency within our viewport. So I'm going to leave that one at alpha cut and I'm going to close this one down. So that's my setup within the viewport. And this is one of the reasons why I decided to use an Ar Arnold surface shader as opposed to this guy here. I was getting better results in my viewport. Now, the other way to view our results and probably the more important way is when we render. And if I come to the Arnold tab over here, I can hit play on the Arnold render view and it renders black. And the reason that it is rendering black is because there are no lights in the scene. And Arnold usually expects lights in the scene or else it will render a black screen. Now, in our case, we don't want lights in our scene. So we have to figure out a different way to get Arnold to show our renders. So I'm going to close this guy down just for a second. And I'm going to bring back up my hypershade here. And the way that I'm going to get Arnold to show up my renders without putting lights in the scene is I'm going to turn up the emission weighting on my shader. If I select my shader here and I have set up my hypershade this time to show the properties just over here, you can show the different windows just using this one here. So I've got my shader selected and if I scroll down here, I can see that I've got emission properties just here. And if I dial up the emission, it will start to show in my render. So. I'm gonna dial the emission weight up to one here. And you can start to see my shader start to glow just up here in the preview. And if I was to hit play, my render shows up now and it is rendering kind of bright white, like it's emitting a light. And that's essentially what it is doing. There are no lights in my scene. This is just the emission shader turned up. Uh, I want to limit the amount of light coming through on my object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive the emission with the RGB texture. So I could go and set that up as just like we did previously. I could click here and I could load in a projection node, etc. But a much faster way to do it is to just use the setup that I already have. I'm going to be using the RGB texture that I had. That's this little guy here. And I'm going to be setting up a projection node um, just like I did previously. So why don't I use the setup that I've already got? So I'm going to take this guy here, the out color, and I'm going to use it to overwrite emission color. Now just double check, it does need to be emission color that you're overwriting. Okay, and the way to overwrite it in the hypershade is just click on out color here and just drag out a wire and put it over emission color. Okay, and that's a much faster way to do the same thing. And now I can see that it's rendering correctly. It's not all blasted out to white. Now I don't have any lights in my scene and the emission color is making sure that it renders correctly. So that's that problem solved. I still have one last little issue to solve, which is the opacity is cutting out the shape on my viewport, but it does not appear to be doing so in my render. And that is because Arnold by default assumes that everything is opaque, i.e. not transparent. And it does that so that it can render uh, more quickly. So I need to tell Arnold that this particular model here actually has some cut out on it some transparency or opacity that it needs to be aware of. So I can select it and I can select it by clicking the viewport. I can also select it by clicking in the Arnold render view. Once with that model is selected, I can go to the, the attributes on the model shape. So it's this one here. It's the, uh, the geo shape and come down. There's an Arnold tab just here and I need to turn off opaque. And that tells Maya that this particular object is transparent. If I go back to my Arnold render view now and I check, you can see that, yes, it has now rendered it without that black line around the outside. Now, there's quite a few steps in that if you haven't used the hypershade before. Uh, so a very useful tip right at the end of this video is that you can duplicate shading setups. So you're going to need to do the same thing for quite a few objects in your scene.
Uh, usually you'll have foreground, midground, and background objects. Select your shader. Now make sure you're happy with the setup and it's working the way you expect. And then you can go edit, duplicate, and you can duplicate the shading network. Okay, now it's gonna show both of them down here. So just to see the new one, right click and go graph network. And now you're looking at just the new setup and you might call this floor underscore SHD. And we can go and apply this onto our floor. Okay, so I can take this guy, middle mouse click and drop it onto the floor here. And that will set it up for the floor. Now, the only thing that needs to change to get this to work correctly for the floor is we need to swap out the textures. So I need to swap out my house texture here for my floor texture. So floor RGB with the shadow in it uh, is here. Now I don't need an alpha in this case because the floor doesn't have any alpha cutout. So in fact, I need to get rid of the opacity and again, I can do this in the attribute editor if I like. I can come over to my shader over here and I can scroll down to opacity, which is under geometry here. I could right click and I could break the connection. So that's one way to do it. Or the other way is within my hyper shade here, I can just drag the wire off of opacity. So that will break the connection there. And then I just need to make sure that the opacity color is set back to white. So I'll just set that back over to white, which is uh, going to make sure that it is not see through. And now if I go and take a look at my viewport, it's set up the floor for me. So I didn't have to go through all of that setup again. It's used the previous setup for me and set up the floor straight away. And if I was to take a render now, it has rendered up the floor for me. So that's a pretty handy shortcut once you've got the first one set up and you're happy with it. So that was a brief overview of how to set up our projection shader. We looked at setting it up in the attribute editor for our color and our opacity. And then we took a look at setting it up for emission within the hypershade. Along the way, we also took a quick look at the viewport settings to try and get an alpha cutout in our viewport. And we took a look at setting up our render view and the issue we ran into there was we were still getting our black outline in the render view. So we select our model and on the shape tab for that particular model, we just turn off opaque. And just towards the end, we probably covered the most important tip of the video, which is you can duplicate shading networks. So assuming you have a good grasp of what's going on, you only really need to set it up the once and then swap out the textures for all of the other objects. Okay, now that's a broad overview of setting up projection shaders for Arnold.